Hi there, I'm Timothy Lindsdale, a video producer and a Christian, and also I'm putting on my science cap today. I saw kind of an interesting article about virus infecting bacteria. Well, we find out that bacteria can catch cold too, I guess. <laughs> Let's find out about that. Uh, start out with, would you like and comment on my video and subscribe uh, to support my channel? If you, if you would, that'd be terrific. Uh, you might recall uh, that viruses act as a minuscule infectious agents. They forcibly enter a cell and they conquer its molecular machinery. And the, the cell is instructed via viral DNA to stop making and uh, uh, its normal cellular parts and instead make more viruses of transcription and replication. As more and more viral parts are manufactured, the cell breaks apart, its walls rupturing in a process called lysis, and the newly formed viruses are released and infect other cells. Oh boy. Think about the times when you're getting uh, that scratchy throat, cold coming on, and you know that this virus has entered your cells of your body and screwing up those cells through DNA instruction and alien beast inside you and your body's in battle with it. Yes, Man, I'm not sure if I newly wanted to know all that. But uh, viruses infect people, plants, animals, anything living. But there's also viruses that infect tiny bacteria. Uh, you may know that, of course, there's dangerous bacteria, and also there's all, all kinds of bacteria that are good for our health, such as the bacteria in your gut that helps to uh, assimilate the food and so forth. I take uh, prebiotics and probiotics uh, for that reason, which does help, because I have to take um, uh, uh, per Parkinson's uh, drugs that do affect your intestinal tract. So. That's a whole other story I've talked about before. But, okay, they infect uh, these uh, tiny uh, bacteria. Uh, these are simply called phages. They, they duplicate or replicate with the bacterium following the infection of their genetic material. Let's, let's check this out. Okay, the viruses infect people, plants, animals. But there are also viruses that infect tiny bacteria. Okay, those are the phages. Now, they replicate within the bacterium, just like the cells of your body, follow the injection of the genetic material through the bacteria's cell wall and into the bacterial cytoplasm. They're getting down in there where they can make things happen. They, they do contribute to marine health. Bacteriophages contribute to marine health by cycling, lysing of... Boy, big words here, let me... Get this understandable. Health by a cyclic, a majority of bacteria in the oceans every 24 hours. So in the oceans, uh, these uh, bacteria, these good bacteria, are helping to recycle a uh, majority of bacteria in the oceans every 24 hours. This designed, oh boy, here we go. You don't see this often. Here's where the argument is. Is it designed or did it come from of survival of the fittest. The argument between somebody creating this and it's creating itself. And that's where the argument's at. The process helps to prevent bacterial population explosions as well as cycling carbon in the oceanic food webs. Now that's an important thing in this reading of an article I saw that you... In the, in the argument over global warming, is there anything that's consuming the carbon? Well, we know that plants do consume carbon dioxide. That is their main source of, through uh, photosynthesis to make food. So we're seeing something in the ocean from this bacteria that also uh, cycle carbon in the oceanic food webs. At the uh, turn of the 21st century, the complexity of bacteria, organisms that don't have a nucleus, uh, was well known. In 2019, researchers have said 
that with new technologies, uh, for example, time-lapse fluorescent microscopy and cryo-electron tomography, we can start to understand the amazing inner life of bacteria and look at all their very sophisticated organizational principles. Well, that sounds fun. What was discovered? At UCSD, which is not mm, 20 miles from my house, uh, research, researchers have provided the first example of cargo within bacterial cells transiting among treadmill-like structures in a process similar to that occurring in our own cells. Now, there is significant difference between bacterial and human cells, of course. But amazingly, the phage convert the bacterial cells, this, this virus, they have infected into a mammalian type cells with a centrally located nucleus-like structure formed by a protein shell surrounding the replicated phage DNA. So if we get this understood that the viral attack on the bacteria is turning it into a nucleus-like structure. Whoa, is that wild? That sounds like that, that sounds like a pretty nifty alien movie. We've invaded them, we're turning them into something else. You've heard a number of uh, monster shows, horror shows like that. What's going on in the world? Now, this uh, phage replicates inside bacteria. It's so fascinating, said one of the researchers. At, it's the University of California in San Diego, UCSD locally. Uh, there are a lot of more questions to explore about the mechanisms that it uses to take over the bacterial host cell. Okay, we started out with the virus taking over bacteria. Uh, like all microbial research, this particular investigation also brought new questions about the transportation and, and uh, distri distribution mechanisms within bacterial cells. So these scientists are having a whole bunch of fun here trying to sort all this stuff out. But it, uh, the, the arguments, uh, many times, uh, I, I read these things as a Christian trying to understand the world better around me, understand science, and um, what's really going on. Um, uh, the evolutionists would say these phages have evolved a sophisticated and directed mechanism of transport using filaments to replicate inside their hosts. Now, those who believe that something is designed these phages are designed in a sophisticated and directed mechanism of transport using filaments to replicate inside their hosts. The first statement relies on time and chance, the second on plan and purpose. In other words, was this engineered? Was this engineered to work? And does, it, does the evidence show it's engineered or is it a happenstance? Now, we understand the, the food web in the world, that uh, something eats this, something bigger eats that, and we just keep going up the chain. We have a food chain, right? Now, something that's complicated down to that level, which is going to be a foundational level, right, Very down on the bottom, is going to affect everything above it. So if it's happening by happenstance, I see that as very difficult for that possibly to get from point A to point B, but that's that's what I see. That's what I see. It's always that argument between was it was it designed or was it an accident? Well, the the crazy thing is we can two people can look at exactly the same evidence and come up with two separate different answers and that's that's where we're at on these things. What are you gonna do? I enjoy it. Read these articles, uh, you'll have to decide for yourself, but Ask critical questions. Don't just take it on face value. Um, what was that statement in the 60s, you know? Uh, uh, question everything. Uh, question your professors and teachers. R read some stuff for yourself, you know? You're going to be faced with that. That's how it is. Especially as a Christian. <laughs> There's a big challenge. Of course, not every Christian believes that uh, word for word out of Genesis. So we have divisions, too. Hey, like and comment on my videos, subscribe to support my channel, get out there, study, look around in the world, and just make it a great day.